I, I, I want to talk to you this morning about the law of love. If you, if you have your Bible, go to the book of John chapter 13. Hallelujah. John chapter 13, when you're there, just say amen. It says in verse 34, John 13, 34, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Powerful statement. Now, the first thing we're going to talk about this, what, what he's saying there in, in the law of love, and that's really what he's doing. God, Jesus really replaced the whole old covenant laws with two, and it's, we call it the law of love, that you love God with all your heart and you love people as you love yourself. But before we go too far here, you might have to forget about everything you think that you know about love. Because growing up, you know, especially as a boy, it's a lot harder. Because, you know, when you think of love, you think of, like, romantic movies. You know what I mean? Like, like you think of girly love story. You know what I mean? As a boy, as a man, right? And so you can't take that in, in the fleshly, worldly, in the world's idea of love and bring that into the Bible because it's not, it's not the same. Who knows that? The love of God is a supernatural force. God is love. He's not a rom-com. He's love. It's who he is. And when you walk in love, you walk in God. And you will not ever truly walk in the level of power that God has for you as a believer if you don't walk in love, because the gifts of the Spirit operate by love. Prophecy operates by love. Giving is motivated by love. Everything we do as a believer should be motivated by love. Are you with me? And so a lot of believers, their theology is right. Even their believing is right. I believe I am who God says I am. Yeah, but there is a foundation that you're missing, which is love. The love of God this is huge. I love talking about love because when we're talking about love, we're talking about God. Can you say amen? We are. We're talking about him. When you say love, you said God. Again, get the world's idea of love out of your head. That is not what we're talking about. You, you almost have to relearn what love even is. But you got to know love is God and God is love. When you said God, you said love. And that's why I've, I've loved going through the word replacing everywhere it says God, I'll write there, I'll write the word L-O-V-E, I'll write love. And so it changes the way you see certain passages. Yeah, I mean, it's true, it's, it's all right there. Uh, in the beginning, right? Love created the heavens and the earth. Think about that. And love made man in his image and after his likeness. And love blessed man. Think about that. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. It was love. Are you with me? So it's the greatest commandment, right? Someone says, what is the greatest commandment? They challenged Jesus. What is the greatest commandment? He said, this is it. It's the first one. Love God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your strength. Romans 5 and verse 5. Now look at this. Romans 5, 5 says, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. One translation says that the love of God is, where it says it's shed abroad. One translation says, the love of God is poured into our hearts. Listen to me now. When you got saved, when you get born again, even when you rededicate your life to the Lord, something happens in that moment. You get born again, but God takes his love and he pours it into your heart. Think about that. He, he, the, the King James says, it's shed abroad in our heart. Powerful, you know? Listen, the day you get saved, you get the love of God. It's on the inside of you. His love is living in you. You can never honestly say as a believer, I can't love that person. Because yes, you can. You do have what it takes. God has put something in on the inside of you that will enable you to love the foulest, to love the, to love the unlovely. 
I mean, I'll, I'll tell you, uh, there was this guy that I know of, um, he went to a, a, a riot. Remember the riots? Remember in 2020, it was okay to riot and gather, but you couldn't go to church? Well, so this, th- these people were burning stuff down. I mean, it was bad in this community. So this community was getting ready. Businesses were boarding up their windows. They were chaining things. And this minister went, and what he did is when, when the group showed up, which is a major group, if I said the name, you know who it was, but I'm not trying to get political on this. But, but when the group showed up, he had a team with them, and they all went, and they just said, we love you. Jesus loves you. And they said, could we hug you? And they started hugging all the rioters. They started hugging them. And you know what? That whole riot, it fizzled out. Now, in the flesh, you'd want to go, you're attacking the city, you're burning the business down. You know, that's the flesh. But the love of God rose up in these people and they started loving on them. They started hugging. People were weeping. People were getting saved. It totally diffused the devil's plan in the city. Listen, someone could be manifesting a demon on you. Who's ever had someone manifest? And it's like, you're not even talking to that person. Did you know you can diffuse it with the love of God? If you just humble yourself, takes that, and you just start to love and operate and respond with the love of God. Are you with me? You can totally, you can totally upend a demonic attack. I'll tell you that right now. The devil cannot operate when the love of God is coming out of the believer. It, he can't. Uh-oh. Oh, I see some manifestations of the flesh this morning. Hallelujah. Speaking of manifestations, I don't like this. Yeah, I hope your flesh doesn't like this. I hope I discourage your flesh. And I hope I encourage your heart. Hallelujah. Amen. So, I mean, it's the greatest commandment. And you have the love. You can't honestly say, I can't love that person. Because God has given you the ability to do so. You have to yield to that love. That's a decision you make. In that scripture we read at first, John 13, 35, Jesus said, all people will know you're my disciples if you love one another. Everybody say, if. If If you love one another. If. They'll know you're my disciples. If. Everyone say, if. Ah. I thought they'd know I'm a disciple. I go to church. I carry a Bible. On my Facebook, it says I'm a Christian. But do you love? Do you have the love of God? Are you with me? Because Jesus said, these are the words of Jesus You can be a believer, but are you a disciple of his? And you are a disciple if you love one another. Love, if you look it up in the dictionary, it is a verb. Who knows that love is a verb? It is something you do. Love, get the world's idea of love out of your head. Because love is not a feeling. Because a lot of times, there are people who really get under my skin, and I have to just choose to love them. Come on, River Church. I'm going to sleep on me. Amen. I'll go out there and shake you. Hallelujah. I work too hard on these Sunday mornings for you to sit there and sleep. Are you with me? Come on. I'm leading the worship, taking up the offering. Uh, Come on. And then I will shake you. It's like the rudest thing you can do ever to any preacher is to sit there and go. It's, It's like actually really rude. So I have to choose to love you when I preach. Because sometimes I just want to go. The old churches used to take a big stick and a helps ministry was they would go and poke people if they were sleeping. This is true. In church history in America, they'd walk the, who wants that helps ministry? Walk with a big stick. (laughs) They would would reach through. (laughs) Who wants to operate in that helps ministry? Amen. (laughs) There was one preacher who packed a squirt gun when he preached. And it was known in the church, if you sleep, he pulls out the squirt gun, and you get it. <laughs> He's glad I operate in the love of God. Amen. So there are people who get under my skin. You just have to choose to love them. You have to choose to walk in love towards people. And this is our calling as a believer. The love of God is not carnal. The love of God is not fleshly. Who, who knows that, right? Now, who, know, who knew this? There are four types of love in the Bible. Who already knew that, right? So if you don't know, I'm going to go through them really quickly. Um, you know, If you read through the Bible, you'll just see the word love, 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 love. But there are four different types of love in the Bible, four different Greek words that the translator didn't really, you know, the translator of the scripture, they didn't really clarify which love that it's talking about. So I'm going to give you the four kinds of love that 
you, you'll find in the Bible, and these are all different Greek words. The first is eros. Eros, E-R-O-S. That's romantic kind of love. That's the love that I have for my wife, right? right? That, that's a romance kind of love. That's not the love of God we're talking about, right? Uh, then there's storge. That's the family kind of love, right? That's the... Um, you know, a, a husband, or I'm sorry, a father and their kids, a mother and their kids, the, the brother, sister, uncles. You know, I love my uncles, right? I love my aunts. I love my cousins. It's, that's the, I store J them, right? It, it's, it's different. Then there's philea, uh, which is the friendship kind of love. Who loves your friends, right? You, you have love for your friends. So all these are in the Bible, but then there's agape. Who's ever heard that word agape? Yeah, it comes from the Greek word love, it's God's love. The, when the Bible says, and the love of God was poured in our hearts, it says the agape of God was shed abroad in your hearts. That is the supernatural force of love that you get when you get saved. Oh, hallelujah. And that's in John 13, 15. By this, all people will know you are my disciples if you agape one another. It doesn't say if you have... this. Who sees that? This is not a friendship kind of love. Are you with me? This is not, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and Boomer, we just, we're friends, right? This is not like, you know, obviously not romantic. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> just make that clear. Amen. <laughs> and it's not even, well, we're all family in Christ, so it's a fami family kind of love. Uh-uh. It's agape love. It's God's supernatural love that gets put in our hearts. It is a supernatural ability to love everybody, even the worst of the worst, even the phallus, even no matter what they did, you have a love. Even if they totally wronged you, even if they totally wronged you and you love them. And that's supernatural. You cannot do that in the natural. Who knows that? There are certain lines people can cross. And in the natural, you want to take a weapon, you know what I mean? And you want to go do business with them. You know, you want to go Rambo on them. There are certain lines people can cross. But when agape is on the inside of you, when God's love is in there, there's something that, that rises above all else where you want to give them the five-fold ministry, but you'll go, I forgive you and I love you and mean it. And it's real. Come on, who's experienced that love where you've been able to forgive somebody and, and you know it's just supernatural that you're even able to forgive them? Are you with me? I thought it was powerful that script or that the, the, the story that Vincent told of that girl who had been molested and, and it was this terrible thing and it was in the family and the family were involved in the church and the power of God hit her and she started to scream but then she said, I forgive them, Jesus, I don't want them to go to hell. What is that? That's not normal. That is not normal. That is God's love on the inside of her that set her free. Because it actually frees you because those people who wronged you, you're not holding that bitterness. You're not holding that resentment. You're not holding that anger that when their name gets brought up, you do, uh, you know what I mean? Who, who knows what I'm talking about? All of that is gone. All of that's washed away. Because if anybody wronged anybody, my sin put Jesus on the cross. Amen. My sin put him on the cross. I can't hold anything against anyone because Jesus took stripes for me. Jesus' beard was plucked out for me. Jesus was nailed for me. It was my offense. It was what I did. My sin put him on the cross. If I was the only person, he would have did it for me. So you see, it's not just, well, I don't want to. Get saved. Get saved and get the agape love of God. And it's his ability. He will help you. He will help you. You, you know, you might, you know, I like what Jim was saying about the bike. You know, you got to be proactive about it. You know, sometimes you might have to do it by faith a few times before God gives you the grace to be able to do it. But it's there. God's love is there. Okay, are you with me? So, so those four types, everyone say agape. Now, now what, what are the benefits of walking in love? So someone says, okay, I need to forgive. Okay, I need to not have resentment or bitterness. And, and that's a benefit of walking in love. Hello. Give it up. I forgive you. Hey, Amen. Who's ever done this? Who's ever, you've been in your car or whatever, and you think, am I holding anything against anybody? Come on. Who's ever done that? You should do that sometimes. And then you think, oh, this person did this. And then you forgive them. 
right? And then the next day you're like, wait, did I really forgive him? <laughs> and you got to keep forgiving until it takes hold, you know? Yeah, that's good. But, but look, look at some benefits of, of walking in love. In fact, I put it in your bulletin today. I, I wrote a devotional about this last night. Um, but, but benefits walking in love. Let me find where I wrote this. In the devotional, is it really that important to walk in love? Yes. First, you must understand God is love. First John 4, 16. The Bible commands us to walk in love. Ephesians 5, 2. When you walk in love, we walk in God. Faith. Now look at this. Galatians 5, 6. Faith works by love. Oh, do you hear me? Faith works by love. Your faith is not going to work if you don't walk in love. Did you hear me? Oh, yeah, this is your vegetables this morning, right? No, no one's jumping around doing handstands or anything. Amen. You should. This is powerful stuff. But, but, but faith, actually, it works by love. So, so oh, you believe, but, it, but nothing. you're not seeing the manifestation of what you're praying for. You have to walk in love to see the manifestation of what you're asking God for. Your faith will not work the moment you stop operating in love. So as a pastor, who knows? I can't afford like a second where I'm not walking in love. It's like, you know, so this is, you know, pastor, everybody loves him. He never gets offended. <laughs> no, you know what, the, my, what it's like being a pastor? I forgive you, I love you. 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 I forgive, oh, you spread that rumor. I forgive you, I love you. And I don't even think about it. Well, shouldn't that be every single one of us, not just the pastor? Amen. Are you getting anything out of this? One day I'll get you used to not leaving at 12. Hallelujah. One day this church is coming out at 1.30 every Sunday, just so you know. Amen. Hallelujah. I know. Come on, River members. I got I to gotta get rough on you. Amen. So are you looking back there? It's 12-12. Amen. He who endures to the end shall be saved. You'll be okay. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> if you're not walking in love, you're not walking in faith, and your faith is not going to work. Okay, that right there, I have to walk in love. Okay, so who's believing for things over your family? Who's believing for things over your, over your job, over your kids, over your physical body? Who's believing? Okay, we just did the whole thing on finances. Who's believing God in that area? If the moment you stop walking in love, you just ended everything. Angels are stopping. Devils are smiling. And, and you, need to, you need to get that right and start operating in the love of God. You can't afford one moment without it. Okay. Um, uh, love never fails. 1 Corinthians 13, 8. Love never fails. When you walk in love, you won't fail. It, for the believer, everything we do should be motivated by love. So, so every, say, say this with me. Say, love, love. Never, fails. never fails. When you walk in God's love, you will not fail. Are you with me? When I see someone as a believer, they, they venture out and they face plant, you can almost, well, it could be several things, but one thing it could be, even if God told them to do it, one thing it could be, they just weren't walking in love and how they were approaching it. Are you with me? I mean, you see people, they start off very well and then they get offended and then they get bitter, then they get resentful, and then it was like everything God was doing through them stops. Who's seen that before? Offended. Uh, love is God, and when you walk in love, you walk in God. These are the benefits of walking in love. The gifts of the Spirit work by love. Who knows that? Who's read the gifts of the Spirit chapter? What does it say at the end? Let me show you a more excellent way. What's the excellent way? The love of God. All nine gifts of the Holy Ghost, they work by love. So we had someone yesterday on the TikTok. They said, all the gifts of the Spirit stopped flowing in my life. Well, I would, I would want to know, when did your love walk stop? Because when I love you, I, you know, I want to see you healed. And the love of God begins to rise up. Jesus would be moved with compassion to heal the sick, right? Come on. God will move through that love. You love people. You, you want them to have direction. Uh, word of knowledge begins to flow. Word of wisdom begins. Who knows what I'm talking about? You love somebody. Miracles begin to happen. You love somebody. Faith is released. Gift of faith. Love is the platform for all nine gifts of the Holy Ghost to operate out of your life. This, this is why we walk in love. Prophecy works by love. True giving only works by love. If people don't operate in love when they give, there's strings attached. Come on, who's ever, who's ever had someone give something to you, but there was a string attached? 
I scratched your back now and my lower shoulder blade on the left side. I need a little itch. You know, they come back. I need the favor remunerated, you know. And so you didn't give. You just you manipulated. You know what I mean? Or they give, but now they expect something. They want a good seed or whatever. So, no, but when you love somebody, you will bless people who could never bless you back in a million years, and you still bless them. Why? Because you love them. Are you with me? Is this good? Everything we do as a believer should be motivated by love. The reason people don't see the anointing and the power of God operating in their life like they want is because many times they are not walking in love or in the fruit of the Spirit. 1 John 4, 8 says, If anyone does not love, anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. You might know about God, but you don't know him if you do not operate in his love. Are you getting this? You might know about him. You might have a lot of head knowledge about Scripture. But you, the Bible says, those who do not agape, they don't know God. Think about that. Come on, do I have anyone who knows God? I didn't put that in there. That's the Bible. Hallelujah. Who knows I just read the Bible to you? Come on in this Presbyterian church. Dead bones live again. Are you getting this? All right, well, what does the love of God look like? So go here, First, First Corinthians chapter 13. This is so good. I'm glad I came. I think I'm preaching quite good. Stole that from Vincent. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All right, First Corinthians chapter. What, what does the love of God look like? So, okay, it's something we do. It's not something we feel. Well, what does that tell me? I can be in the worst mood, you know, which who, who has some, that sometimes. You know, you wake up on... Sometimes you wake up on the right side. Sometimes it's like, I don't know where I woke up. Amen. One time I woke up, I had a, I had a, a twin mattress, and it was on this, I don't even know what you call it, but it was kind of something that resembled a frame. And I was up against the wall, and it was Saturday. And so I'm sleeping, I'm getting ready for Sunday morning. And I was just tossing and turning, and that whole bed flipped upside down. I woke up with the mattress on top of me. So, you know, I woke up on the wrong side. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 4, in the Amplified, it says, I'm sorry, 13 in verse 4. Um, glory to God. In the Amplified, it says, love endures long and is patient and is kind. Love never envies or boils over with jealousy. Love is not boastful. It's not vainglorious. It does not display itself haughtily. Love is not conceited, arrogant, inflated with pride. It is not rude or unmannerly. It does not, love does not act unbecomingly. Love, God's love in us, does not insist on its own rights or its own way, for it is not self-seeking. Love is not touchy or fretful or resentful. Love takes no account of evil done to it. Love pays no attention to a suffered wrong. Love does not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness. It rejoices when right and truth prevail. Love bears up under anything and everything that comes. It is ready to believe the best of every person. Its hopes are fadeless under all circumstances. It endures everything without weakening. Love never fails, never fades out, never becomes obsolete. It never comes to an end. And then it goes on to say that some of the gifts are going to end, but love is not going to end. Hallelujah. So what does God's love look like? Right there. Best passage in the whole Bible that gives us an example of what every believer should be looking like. Not just the pastor, not just the leadership, but every single disciple. They will know you're my disciple. Why? Because of your love. They'll know you're my disciple not because of the bumper sticker, not because you have the denominational tag on your underwear. They, they, they will know you're my disciples because there's love. You can't fake that love. It's God's love. It's supernatural love. It's a spiritual force that comes out from the believer. Hallelujah. It's something you have to yield to. So what, it, what does it look like? Well, number one, it endures long. Love endures. It's patient. Love is patient. Are you with me? 
So who's ever learned in your walk with God, you don't pray for patience (laughs) because it'll be a rough week, right? But love is patient. So, you know, someone takes your seat. Okay, well, you're patient with that. You know, who who knows? It's one of the fruits of the Spirit. Patience in the King James is called long-suffering. Guess what? You're called to suffer as a Christian. Part of the suffering is persecution. Another is being patient. Who, who knows? The Bible says we're called to suffer. Suffering is not sickness, disease, poverty, and lack. I'll tell you what the suffering is. Persecution, being patient. You want to know a big suffer? Suff, suffer suff, something you suffer for? <laughs> Sometimes it's suffering to walk in love towards certain people. The song? Is that right? Sometimes it is. It is the suffering you're called as a believer. That, you know what? Jesus is on the cross. They're putting spears in him. They're mocking him. And Jesus says, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. He's on the cross suffering. It's part. Sometimes it's hard for me to walk in love towards certain people. It is. It's hard. Not to, when they mouth off, to just shoot back at them. and Get them with a zinger. You know, it's hard sometimes on the road and someone does something and you want to just, you know, and you can't. Who says that's, that's, come on, don't look all like a halo over your head. It is. It can be hard sometimes. Sometimes with your spouse, it might be hard to walk in love towards them, but you are called to do it. Right. Uh, uh, oh, okay, I'm going to keep, keep going with that one. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so patience, walking in love, it can, it can be suffering sometimes, you know, but that's good. That's good. That's not a bad thing. The Bible says that suffering produces endurance, which produces character. Hallelujah. Okay, so love, it endures long, and it's patient. It's patient. Are you with me? Learn to be patient. You learn to wait. You know, being a servant, you know the Bible word for servant is the word waiter. You wait. You're at the door. You're greeting, right? You're waiting on people, right? You're, you're ushering. You're waiting on people. Are you Okay, I think you get it. Love is, is patient. Love is, it endures long and is patient and it's kind. Everybody say Kind. <laughs> Amen. Y'all sound so happy when you say it. <laughs> love is kind. Love, or kindness is defined as the quality of being friendly, generous, and considerate. A person it, it, it is a person who's generous, helpful, and who thinks of other people's feelings. So that's kindness. You're friendly. So a friend must show himself friendly. We have people come, no, no one's my friend. You got to be friendly to people. You actually got to go out of your way. You, like maybe you can invite someone over, you know? That's, that's called being friendly, you know? That means you come in. Yeah, you might have been going through some stuff, but when you get around people, look, I always think about it this way. You know, I, I don't know if it's still like this on Facebook, but, but you should be able to do that thing of do not disturb, right? Do not disturb, and then people still message you, right? On, on one of my messaging apps, I have a thing that says, do not disturb, and people still message or whatever, but, but that's to tell everybody, do not talk to me right now. But then there's the green icon, and what does that mean? I'm available. And so what do you think your face is? Do not disturb or available. Some of you sitting there right now, your face is ignore. Your, 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 your face is block. <laughs> I blocked them. Amen. No, what's your face? What, your, the Bible says, talks about your countenance, right? Your, built, your face is a billboard for what is going on in your heart. And when the love of God is flowing out of you, you sometimes may, I know we're in Coshocton, you may get a big cheesy grin. You may even look pleasant. You may even look like someone that just has Jesus living in them. I mean, I'm just throwing that out there, you know. I know we're in Coshocton. Amen. But it is possible when Jesus is in your life, you, happy are the people whose God is the Lord. Someone display, what does happiness look like? What is your, so uh, uh, kindness is sometimes, yeah, you're going through stuff, but don't, bring your, don't take your problems and begin to lay that on everybody else. 
So then you come to church. Jamie comes up. Hey. Oh, hey, Jamie. Yeah. <laughs> Rosie comes up. Hallelujah. How are you? And you go, uh, yeah, I'm good. Thanks. Good. And sit by myself. Well, you're taking what you're going through, and that's not walking in love because you're taking what you're going through, and now you are, you're dividing it like a cake, and you're giving everybody a taste of your problems, and that is not the love of God, and that's not the way out of your problems either. It might appease your flesh. It might feel good to your flesh, but it's not helping you, and you are spreading your bad mood like COVID. You are super spreading No, you are. I've never seen so many super spreader Christians. They come in, you know, not at the river, right? We're all good here. But, you know, if you, you walk into a place with a bad mood, it is as contagious as a cold, as the flu. Okay, who's ever been in a good mood and somebody was rude to you and it messed your day up? Right? Totally messed your day up. Okay, so that shows us, you know what? On the flip side, who's ever been in a bad mood? Somebody was kind to you, loving to you, and it cheered you up. Okay, so love is kind. So, you know, I, I make sure I do that. You know, it, you know, I go through a lot through the week. I mean, you don't hear about it. You don't hear the stuff I go through. You don't hear what's going on in my life. You don't hear the, the physical battles that I'm dealing with or anything. And why? Because God's with me. God is with me. Are you with me? And I trust him. He's coming through. Wouldn't it be terrible if I had a hard week and I came in? <laughs> you know, and I put that on you. <laughs> Start preaching hellfire and brimstone, you know, like whatever. Okay, so we should be kind and be friendly. Come on. I know this is deep stuff here. Uh, kindness is generous, right? So like when I go, look, look, like if you go to McDonald's with somebody, okay, pet peeve. If you go to McDonald's with somebody and they order a $1 tea, don't go. Where's the dollar, buddy? You know, if you can buy the $1 tea, I'm not saying go buy them a Lambo. But some people are so stingy. They are so stingy. It's like the bill comes at the table and everybody just kind of like uh, waiting for someone else to take the bill. Just pay for your own meal or just, okay, anyway, don't get me on that. Hallelujah. Consider it. So you consider how you're coming across. Like, I think about that. You know, if I'm, I'm dealing with someone, I don't know, this person might be suicidal. So how I come across to them is going to, it means something. You know, it does mean something. You know, how I come across, they might leave me. I would be horrified if somebody left talking to me and they had a struggle in their faith because they say, if that's how Christians are, I don't want to be around that. Good. We have a, a responsibility to walk in the love of God. So, okay, love is patient. Love is kind. Love uh, is never envious. You know what kindness is? It's treating people better than they deserve to be treated. <laughs> kindness is treating somebody, somebody better than they deserve. Okay. Love is never envious or boils over with jealousy. Okay. So jealousy, the only person who can be jealous and not sin is God. So, you know, you even see people in relationships and even in marriage, people get jealous. That's not God. They're the only person that can be jealous and not sin is God. Are you with me? And so jealousy is not walking in love. You shouldn't make other people feel guilty because they have something you want. Are you with me? That is not walking in love. You know, you see people, they're, they're blessed. They, you know, have a nice house. Well, I praise God for that. That's great. That's great. You know, I'm not going to go and say, well, you know, you should sell that and give that to the church. <laughs> Get out of here. You know what I mean? People have a level of blessing they're comfortable with you at, but the moment you get, you know what I mean? The moment you start to really get blessed, people will have an attitude with you. And as a church, we shouldn't because there's enough blessing to go around. It's like if someone gets healed and then someone gets jealous. Well, why'd they get healed? I, I serve in the church. Hey, older brother, you know, prodigal son story out there. What are you killing the wee fatted calf for? I've served you all this time. You know the story, right? You walk in love. You should rejoice with those who rejoice. If someone gets something that I'm believing God for, I say, 
Uh, thank you, Jesus. They got it. That means, hey, would you pray for me? I'm believing for that same thing. You know, I'm, I'm going to rejoice with them. Don't be jealous. Amen. Okay, it, it is not boastful or vainglorious or, or uh, excessively proud. Boastful. Love is not boastful. You know what boastful is? We'll end here in a moment. But you know what being boastful is? It's not just talk. Some people are, they, they boast in how they talk, you know. They, they boast. Which preachers can actually be the worst. They're boasting about how big their meetings are, how big their churches are. I, and I love getting around those people. I've been at tables. They're like, yeah, I had 3,000 at my meeting. Oh, I have, I have 2,000 members at my church now. And then they go around. And it's like, who can pee the longest stream? It really is like that, you know. <laughs> And they go around bragging about their church. And then they come to me. They say, you know, and then, no, I, oh, I, 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 we had like 30 strong at our church. 4,000 decisions for Jesus. 30 strong. How many? Yeah, so anyway. Boast can also be showing excessive pride, self-satisfaction, and one's own achievement, importance, possessions, or abilities. Not just what you say, it's how you present yourself, too. You know, you strut around like a peacock because <laughs> you're this important whatever in the city. We've had city officials come to our meeting. There have been some, I didn't even know they were city, like city, like high level, like high level people would have come to some of our meetings. Being me, I don't even know who they are. And I treat them like anybody else, you know. And I, we've had some people get offended. We didn't give them preferential treatment. One time we had the mayor show up. And, you know, I know the mayor, you know, the, the other mayor. I knew him. And uh, I didn't know he was the mayor then. I didn't know who he was. I just go back, lay my hand on his head. I start prophesying over him, you know. You come to the river, we don't change anything for anybody. No one's too important for the Holy Ghost. Are you with me? Hallelujah. So it's not boastful. And, uh, and so you, it's even how you display yourself, you know. Um, boasting, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, it is not rude or unmannerly and it does not act unbecomingly. Being rude means being offensively impolite. So who's ever met brother or sister, bad attitude, just rude, just rude. How are you? Good. Okay. That's rude, you know, and that's not the love of God. The love of God is not rude to people. The love of God is considerate. So, okay, I'm going to end here because <laughs> I've I preached three sermons today and led the worship. Amen. <laughs> and we have pies and praise. Hallelujah. So, <laughs> amen. <laughs> but the Bible even says outdo one another in showing honor. So love is not rude. So, you know, love always prefers the other person. In fact, the Bible says no one should look out for their best interests. Everybody should look out for the best interests of other people. But if you get in the American church, the reason why it's sick is because everybody looks after their own best interests and they are not concerned about anyone else around them. It's all about them. Their prayers are selfish. Their motives are selfish. Their everything they do is out of a selfish thing. But if you turn that around and you begin to love what God loves and see like God sees, you will water and you will be watered. Yeah. Everybody say love. love. Okay, it's a verb. So we've all missed it. Who's ever perfectly walked in love and never missed it? No hands went up. Only Jesus did. We've all missed it. And in all the things I've listed, we all, it, it's kind of like everyone here is probably dealing with something else, right? I know I am. There's a couple things I'm dealing with. TikTok, I just have to repent to you for what I said last night. You know, but, but <laughs> love, is not, love is not rude, right? I get on the live stream. Religious people get on and I have a hard time with them. Um, look, Ephesians 4.26 says, when you are angry, do not sin. Do not let, let your wrath last until the sun goes down. Leave no such room or foothold for the devil. Give him no opportunity. Let the thief steal no more, but rather let him be industrious, making honest living with his own hands so that he will be able to give to those in need. Let no foul or polluting language nor evil word or unwholesome and worthless talk ever come out of your mouth, but only such speech as is good and beneficial to the spiritual progress of others. And as, as fitting 
to the need and the occasion that it may be a blessing and give God's favor and grace to those who hear it. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Do not offend or sadden him whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and indignation and wrath and rage and bad temper and resentment and anger and animosity and quarreling, brawling, clamoring and contention and slander, evil speaking, abusive language be banished from you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. With all malice, spite, ill will, and baseness of any kind, and become useful with, 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 uh, and, and helpful and kind to one another, and tender-hearted, understanding, loving-hearted, forgiving one another readily and freely as Christ has forgave and loved you. Oh, that is powerful. I just want to take that and stick it in front of everybody's face for like all week. Just like stick it, like nail it to your forehead. You have to walk around with that. Is this good? Love does not insist on its own rights in its own way. Well, if you really love me, you'd do this. Love doesn't do that. Love is not self-seeking. Love, and, and this is all 1 Corinthians 13, what we just read. Love is not touchy. And this is where I'm going to end. Love is not touchy. Everybody say touchy. Easily offended, Right? Who knows people who are easily offended, touchy? I mean, you, they come to church, they get offended like three times in the sermon, in the service, get offended at the usher, and I was like that. I was actually, actually brother touchy. Not like Joe Biden touchy, like, like touchy, <laughs> easily offended. <laughs> like, I, was, I was easily offended. So, so some of you got offended just there. Touchy. And that's not the love of God. Are you with me? In fact, we should be slow to anger. We should be very slow before we get into offense. It's actually the love of God. Are you with me? Hallelujah. So love is not easily offended. And, and I, yeah, I said I'm ending. So the plane's coming for a landing. Thank you for flying River Airlines this morning. We're coming in. Fasten your seatbelts. Put your trays up. We're, we're coming in for a landing here. But <sighs> Hallelujah. It's almost like in the church, you get around some believers who've been in the way for a long time, and it's almost like some of them think being offended is a mark of spiritual maturity. Who's ever been around them? And then they think that actually being offended is a mark of maturity. So let me give you an example. Oh, that person is still smoking, hmm. grieving the Holy Ghost. They think that's maturity, and they get offended. Oh, you see that person out in the parking lot doing that? Oh, yeah, I saw that person. They had that T-shirt on. You believe that? You believe the pastor went past 12 o'clock? You, you believe that? You believe what that pastor said about our president? You know, the Bible says that we are to honor our leaders. You know, <laughs> you, you believe. Legitimate ones. You, you, believe, you believe what that usher did to me. You know, someone took my seat in church. And they say that's, that is maturity because they notice everything that's wrong with everything. And that's not maturity. That's actually immaturity. Maturity says that's happening. Let's pray for them. That's happening. How can, we, how can I use my words to better the situation? Maturity says I love you and I forgive you and I'm not offended. Are you getting this? Easily offended. I told this story recently, you know. Uh, you know, we, we've had people come, they get healed, set free, beaming with the glory of God. They get offended. They lose everything. And, and uh, okay, I'll say this last thing with offense. I, we, we just hit the runway. Um, so <laughs> I got to play it out in my mind. When you are offended, you are always the one who's wrong. You are always the one who's wrong when you're offended. The moment you get offended, you're the wrong one. You're handling it the wrong way. Are you with me? The Bible says, forgive anyone who offends you as Christ forgave your offenses. The moment you have offense, I don't care if you had it five seconds, you had five seconds of unforgiveness in you, five seconds where your faith didn't work, five seconds where you walked out of God's power, five seconds you were outside of God's love, five seconds, forgive. Come on, are you with me? 
I forgive you and I love you. When you're, uh, and, and I'll say this last thing about offense. I know this might be shocking in America. Offense is a choice. You choose to be offended. You choose to be offended. You can choose, okay, everyone's getting their luggage. <laughs> you choose when an offense comes. I can either walk in the spirit and forgive them and love them, or I can walk in the flesh and be angry. Who would say that's a choice? It's a choice. Amen. Did you get something out of this? Everybody say the love of God. Love of God. Hallelujah. Okay, we'll end there because then next week we'll keep going with this because um, I think I'm on to something good. Amen. Actually, when it's quiet, I preach more on it. Amen. Because I, I know I'm on to something. Hallelujah. When we're hooping and shouting, that means, okay, we have breakthrough. Moving on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Um, it's a decision you make to walk in love. You have to make a decision to start operating in God's love. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Don't walk in the flesh. Hallelujah. If you're discouraged by this message, you're in the flesh. And uh, hallelujah. I'm discouraged by that, brother. That's a good, because I discourage your flesh. Your heart should be encouraged. Amen. Your heart should be encouraged. Whose heart's encouraged? Who's, who's going to do this? Who, who's, gonna, who's going to begin to walk in love? Amen. Who, who the Lord already brought like three names to you that you need to start dealing with. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Who needed to hear this today? Did you get this? Amen. Hallelujah. Isn't the Lord good? Okay. Well, let's show Kashoktim that we are disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. I, I would be horrified to see people just come to the river and act a certain way, and then they go act out there and there's somebody different. I, I would be horrified to know that who you are in here is not who you are out there. Amen. So we can just walk in the love of God. Hallelujah. Even on new world. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. E even wherever we're at. Walmart. Love of God. Gas station. Love of God. Church. Huh, love of God. Home. In the home. Love of God. Workplace. Love of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Did you get something out of this? Amen. Well, let's stand our feet, everybody.